एवरीवन होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम अंजना फ्रॉम लर्नो हब द फ्री लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म वी कैन स्टडी मैथ साइंस एंड एस एस टी एब्सोल्यूटली फ्री एट लर्नो हब डॉट कॉम In today's class, we are going to discuss ICSE Class 9 Physics Chapter 6 Heat and Energy. We'll be discussing the topics energy flow, sources of energy. We'll be discussing about renewable sources. Are you ready for the session? Let's begin. Just look at this picture. What and all you can see in this picture? So you can see mountain. What else? You can see sky, then trees. What else? Grass. Then you have a small pond. Here there is a fish. What else? There is a rabbit. A deer is there. Then what else? A fox is there. eagle is there what else there are flowers then snakes okay so you can see that all of these are existing in the same system okay in the same in this space all of them are existing of this you can see some are living some are non living we know what are living things and not are non living things so here mountain mountain is non living okay sky is non living trees living grass living pond non living fish is living rabbit is living deer is living fox is living eagle is living flowers are living and then snakes are also living okay some are living and some are non living so do you think you can exist alone in this universe okay just you without plants without flowers without sky without trees without a pond without a river can you exist alone it won't be nice right so here you can see many organisms which are living and non living they are existing together okay so all these components are existing together this we called an ecosystem okay so we can define an ecosystem a unit composed of biotic component biotic component is nothing but just a living things okay it includes producers consumers and decomposers in simple words what are producers we know plants plants produce food okay they use sunlight use chlorophyll water carbon dioxide and they prepare food okay these food which is prepared is used by herbivores herbivores are eaten by carnivores okay so it continues yes so from one to other it is the energy is moving so it includes that is when you consider an ecosystem it includes biotic components which are producers consumers so when you take plants you are a consumer then decomposes okay so once after death what is happening your body gets decomposed yes then you have decomposed so to decompose there are bacteria there are microorganisms so they are the decomposers then a biotic components that is non living light heat rain humidity inorganic and organic substances is called an ecosystem all these components together we call an ecosystem so understood what is an ecosystem so we are existing in an ecosystem examples for ecosystem an aquarium is an ecosystem a garden is an ecosystem when you take an aquarium there are fishes there is water okay there will be stones when you take a garden in the garden you can see birds you can see flowers there may be snakes there may be some small ants trees may be there fruits are there yes so garden is an ecosystem so many components are included in that yes so understood so we know that to do work we need energy to get energy what we are doing we will be having the breakfast yes we have lunch we have dinner so here we are having something to get energy now what is the case of plants in case of plants plants are preparing their food and they are using the food okay so plants are actually preparing food for us also yes so energy is needed so that for the biotic existence energy is needed we have understood so which is a primary source of energy from somewhere it has to start okay it all starts from the sun 
okay so we can say the most significant source of energy for all ecosystem is the sun okay so from sun about 56 to 60 percentage of energy sun's energy falls on the earth okay so of this atmosphere absorbs some energy okay so this 56 to 60 percentage is taken by the atmosphere now 10 percentage of the energy is being used for heating up the land and water okay we know that earth surface there is water okay there are land okay to heat them up 10 percentage is used now 8 percentage falls on plants of this 8 percentage that falls on plants plants use only 0.02 percentage so why do plants use this Plants use this to prepare food. Okay. They prepare food. We know plants prepare food. This process is called photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight using carbon dioxide, water and chlorophyll. Plants prepare their own food. This process is called photosynthesis from smaller classes we are studying. So, we call these plants as producers. They are producing the food using sunlight and sunlight is the primary source okay sunlight is the most significant source of energy okay so from sunlight falls on plants plants prepare their food okay understood next we'll understand the food chain okay so the base of a food chain is the producers which include photosynthetic plants and bacteria so here i have shown you three food chains we have trees here okay deer from where does deer get their food they depend on this trees. Okay. So, from trees, energy is going into deer. Okay. And deer as a whole is eaten by lion. Okay. So, from here, energy is going to lion. Okay. Now, second, flowers. Flies depend on flowers for their food. Okay. Flies take flowers. So, energy is transferred from flowers to flies. Okay, then flies. You can see frogs eating butterflies. Have you seen? Okay, so when frogs eat butterflies, what is happening? The energy is transferred. Okay, energy goes into the frogs. Now, who eats frog? We know snakes eat frog. Okay, when snakes eat frog, what is happening? There is energy transfer. Next, then comes eagle. Eagle eats snake. When eagle eats snake, what happens? There is again energy transfer. Okay, so we started from flowers. Flowers are taken by flies. Flies, frogs eat flies. Snake eat frog and eagle eat snake. So this is how a food chain is. Okay, we start from flower, flies, frog, snake, eagle. They belong to a chain. Okay, trees, deer, lion. This is a food chain. Next, you can see flowers, small fishes. Small fishes take flowers. Okay, energy is transferred. Then these small fish, fishes are eaten by larger fishes and birds eat larger fishes. Okay, here we can see another food chain. This is also a food chain. You can see in all these stages, there are energy transfers. Okay, energy is transferred from one stage to the next stage. Now we'll understand trophic level. So as we have discussed, okay, trees, deer, lion, they are at different levels. After that, we have discussed flowers, flies, a frog, snake, eagle. So, they are at different levels. There are different levels. Okay. So, this food and the energy will be transferred between different levels. Okay. So, these levels we call the trophic levels. The transfer of food energy takes place through various steps or levels in the food chain known as trophic level. So, here you can see at the base you have the plants. Okay. They are directly consuming. They are directly taking the sunlight and they are producing the food. They are called producers. So, they are at the first trophic level. Okay. Next, second trophic level. So, when the energy is transferred from the first trophic level to second trophic level, what is happening is there is an energy loss. Okay. Some energy will be lost and some part of the energy will go to the primary consumer. So, here in this case, grass to rabbit. Okay, when the energy transfer happens from grass to rabbit, what is happening? Some energy is lost and some energy directly goes into the rabbit. Rabbit takes the grass. Okay, next, rabbits to the snakes. Okay, so here again some energy will be lost. Okay, and the remaining energy goes inside the snake. Okay, you can see the energy flow. So, here the snakes are at the third tropic level. 
ओके एट द थर्ड ट्रॉपिक लेवल वी हैव द स्नेक्स सो दे आर कॉल्ड द सेकेंडरी कंज्यूमर प्लांट्स आर टेकन बाय द रैबिट रैबिट्स आर द प्राइमरी कंज्यूमर रैबिट्स आर टेकन बाय द सेकेंडरी कंज्यूमर व्हिच आर स्नेक्स स्नेक्स डायरेक्टली डोंट गो टू द प्रोड्यूसर्स ओके सो दिस इज हाउ इट गोस now then you have the final tertiary consumer you won't be having many things okay when it reaches here almost the energy from where we have started it will be get exhausted okay so you cannot have many layers so here here we have first tropic level second tropic level third tropic level fourth tropic level the fourth tropic level we have the eagle which takes a snake and they are at the tertiary consumer which is at the fourth trophic level so understood so what is a trophic level we have understood yes energy flow and law of thermodynamics so what is energy flow we have understood starting from the sun sun to the producers producers to primary consumers then secondary consumers tertiary consumers then decay okay so do you think this is a cyclic process from the tertiary consumers can energy go back to the sun no right so this is not a cyclic process it is a linear process okay and it is unidirectional reverse direction is not possible. possible okay so understood there is a energy flow we have understood the different tropic level okay so we can say that in an ecosystem energy is accumulated by the primary producers and is transferred through food chain to different tropic levels this phenomenon is called the energy flow with this diagram we will understand in detail okay so here you can see sun's energy okay so sun's energy is used by the plants plants are the producers so what do they do they prepare food okay so here simple substances are getting simple compounds are getting converted into organic complex organic substances okay so here energy is produced the total energy produced we call it as a gross primary production so here the gross primary production is 20810 calories okay so in this big boxes you have the gross primary production okay gpp then you have net primary production so here this energy is used by the plants okay the plants at the same time they use it for the respiration process okay so some energy is lost about 11977 calories are used by plants in the process of respiration okay plants also need energy for the growth its development and for metabolism yes now this energy okay the remaining energy after the 11977 calories which goes for the respiration process the other energy it gets stored okay it gets stored in the plants now when the primary consumers consumes a plant or herbivores takes the plants what is happening this energy is getting directly transferred to the primary consumers okay they have used it for their growth they have used it for the development they have been using it for the daily metabolic activities yes it gets transferred so here you can see only 3368 calories is with the primary consumers so here what happens the plants after reaching the primary consumers the decay process will be happening so energy is used by the plants for the decay also okay so what is primary consumers having primary consumers herbivores as herbivores are having 3368 calories of this now what happens respiration is performed by the primary consumers yes for the respiration okay so breaking down okay what happens we need energy about 1890 calories so for this case here the gpp is gross primary production is 3368 calories okay of this 1890 calories 1890 calories is for the respiration process okay so respiration other metal metabolism may be used then the other energy gets stored for growth development or energy gets stored okay this energy what happens to this energy this energy is stored in their body okay now they are being consumed by the secondary consumers energy which is stored is get is called the net primary production ntp okay so this gets transferred to the secondary consumers when car carnivores consumes the herbivores energy transfer is happening okay so energy gets transferred this much of energy okay from this only 383 calories reaches the secondary consumer it is with the secondary consumers so primary consumers should decay okay so for this decay purpose they need energy so energy is used by the primary consumers for their decay okay so secondary consumers uh, in case of secondary consumers the gross primary production is 383 calories now they use it for the respiration and metabolic activities okay some energy goes for that purpose okay then only the remaining energy some 67 calories are it is getting transferred 
okay to the tertiary consumers of this again what happens the secondary consumers once it is taken by the tertiary consumers they will start decaying so there is some decay energy 46 calories is used for the decay only 20 one calories is remaining with the tertiary consumer so this is a GP, gpp in the case of tertiary consumers now these tertiary consumers use energy for their respiration and other metabolic activities so 15 calories is gone for that okay remaining we call the npp which is six calories now this six calories is what is remaining okay so this is how the energy flows so you can see that beyond this it cannot go this energy gets decay as it is okay so at this tertiary level it is stopping you can see some energy is getting lost so energy is being used yes so this is how the process is so understood the energy flow with this diagram so this diagram is very important now this energy flow is governed by three important laws laws of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics so first law what is the statement the energy can either be created nor be destroyed it can only be transformed from one form to another this is a law of conservation of energy okay now the second one so here you can understand for example you take the case of a bulb okay when electricity passes through bulb the bulb glows which means light energy is produced then heat energy is produced okay some heat energy the heat energy is not useful there so heat energy is produced so here what is happening the electrical energy is getting converted into two forms okay conversion is happening okay it is not created it is not destroyed it is getting converted okay it is getting converted so similarly in this case also what is happening from plants to the primary consumers to the secondary consumers to the tertiary consumers there is a transfer of energy during this transfer there will be loss of energy okay it can be loss of ener energy it is not created or it is not destroyed it is just another form okay so this is a first law now the second law statement is second law of thermodynamics according to which no energy transfer is 100% efficient so how to understand this now we have said that when we start from plants okay we have started from plants so from plants to when you go from plants to primary consumers we have seen there is an energy the energy is getting lost okay primary consumers so first what does plants do plants is using the energy for respiration for digestion for excretion then for the met other metabolic activities for reproduction for growth everything it is using only some percentage of the energy becomes its body okay how does growth happens the energy the food we eat is getting converted into energy and this energy is getting stored only that energy is changing into changing as a body okay so when this transfer happen actually only 10 percentage is getting transferred okay all other gets destroyed okay all other energy will get decay this will happen now when it goes from primary consumer to the secondary consumer again there is only 10 percentage of useful energy okay when it reaches the secondary consumers only 10 percentage it can use as a useful energy so when it goes to the tertiary consumers the tertiary consumers are also getting only 10 percentage of the useful energy so from this we understand that the there can be only three or four levels not more than that okay why because once it reaches the tertiary consumers okay it has very less energy less amount of useful energy is remaining okay because all of them are using the energy yes initially we said in the plants the stored energy is being used for respiration, digestion, other activities, reproduction, growth, development, etc. Even in case of primary consumers, this is happening. All these processes are happening. So, when they are getting consumed by the secondary consumers, decay process is happening. For that, we need energy. Yes. So, from sun's energy, when it reaches the tertiary consumers, only a small amount is remaining. Once the tertiary consumers get decayed, that is also lost. Okay. So, only few levels can be there this is what the second statement means that is no energy transfer is 100 percent efficient it's not that the uh, sun's full energy is used by plants plants energy is completely getting transferred to the primary consumers it is getting completely transferred to the secondary consumers this is not happening okay most of the energy is being lost in different ways only 10 percentage this 10 percentage we call it as a 10 percentage law 
or 10 percentage rule according to which from one tropic level to next tropic level it is only the usable energy that is getting transferred is only 10 percentage. Sources of energy. Before that, what is energy? Energy is nothing but it is the ability to do, do work. Okay, in simple definition, simple definition for energy is energy is the ability to do work. So we know that from the from morning, what and all work we are doing. So we wake up, we need energy. Okay, we go to the washroom, we need energy. We come to school. Before that, we dress up. Yes, to have food, we need energy. To walk, we need energy. To ride a bicycle, we need energy. For, for all this, we need energy. Yes, even though we are inside the vehicle, to drive the vehicle, you need energy. Yes, if you don't have food for two days, you won't be having energy and you won't be able to do any of these works. Okay, so the ability to do work. Energy, we need energy to do work. Okay, so this is energy. From where do we get energy? We know that we get energy from having food. Okay, how is the food prepared? To prepare food. Okay, to prepare food we need heat. Yes, to light the stove. We light the stove. Okay, we get heat and then the food is being prepared. So, where does this heat come from? This is a source of energy. Okay, we have said the sign most significant source of energy is sun. Heat energy is required. Light energy is required. Then we need other forms of energies as well. Wind is required. So here inside a classroom, what and all we have, you can see that the bulb is glowing. In case of a bulb, there is light energy, fan. In case of fan, there is wind energy, there is rotational energy. Then there is sound energy. Okay, when I'm using a mic, there is sound energy. Yes, electrical energy is required to light the bulb. There is electrical energy. So there are different forms of energy. Now, where do these energy come from? So there is a source, okay, from which where the energy comes. Yes, this we call them are the sources of energy. For example, here you can see a windmill. Windmill is a source of energy. It is producing wind. Sun is a source of energy. Sun is producing heat. Sun is producing light. Battery. Battery produces electricity it is a source of energy okay now in case of a washing machine to run a washing machine there should be energy so there should be electrical energy yes electrons should flow only then electricity can be produced okay there are also a source of energy is involved then for a radio to work sound is being produced there is electrical energy yes for all the devices to work there should be energy given only then that energy gets converted to a different form and the machine that is the equipment or the object starts working okay characteristics of sources of energy which is a good source of energy when do we call a source of energy a good source of energy first point a source of energy should be such that it can provide an adequate amount of useful energy at a steady rate over a long period of time at a steady rate over a long period of time so when you are using a source of energy okay you are using a source of energy for example you are using a battery okay this battery you are using to produce to light a bulb to light a small bulb a lady bulb you are using it okay so this battery is efficient only if it is able to light the bulb okay with enough brightness okay if the battery is used and the bulb is glowing but the thing is there is no proper brightness then you can't tell that this battery is efficient okay so here this battery when we are using it should be working at a steady rate just imagine using this battery the bulb is glowing at some time it is not glowing at some time so it is not efficient the battery is not efficient or it is not long lasting okay just let us say you can use only this battery only for some two hours after that you are not able to use so for a fixed time okay for a for in case of battery, we cannot say this. For a long period, if you are able to use, you can say it is a source. It is a good source. So when you can, uh, when you take the case of battery, you do it. Uh, you cannot say that it is having a long life. But still, how much ever life it, ha it has, it should be able to perform its task. Okay. Now second point, it should be safe and convenient to use. It should be safe. Okay, safe. So if you touch this battery, and you are having some problem, you cannot say you are safe with this. Okay, then it is not a good source. It should be convenient to use. Everybody should be able to use the source. 
Now the third, it should be economical. That is, at a good price, it should be available. If you have two sources, okay, one is costly and one is cheaper. If the cheaper one, it is convenient. If it is safe, it is long lasting. At a steady rate, it is producing energy. In that case, you will go for the cheap one. Yes. So you will compare the things. If something is costly, you won't purchase it. You will just check all other qualities as well. So the thing that you're purchasing, the source of energy that you are purchasing should also be economical. You will check this also. Okay. Next, easy to store. Storage should be easy. Maybe some devices cannot be stored in this temperature. Okay. Those devices you cannot use in that temperature. So they should be easy to store as well. Now the fourth point is easy to Transport. It should be easy to store. It should be easy to transfer to, from one place to another place. You will have to carry some some, uh, some objects. Okay, some devices you need to carry. So if it is a, easy to transport, you can say that it is a good source of energy. If these characteristics are there, then you can say they are a good source of energy. How can you classify the sources of energy? There are two classifications. So on the basis of the view of availability. Okay, from the point of view of availability, how much is available, we can classify into two. First is the renewable or non-conventional sources of energy. And the second is non-renewable or conventional sources of energy. Now, what is renewable from the name? Non-conventional or renewable sources of energy. What do you understand? It is from nature. Okay, from nature. For example, sun. Sun is a renewable source of energy. Okay, we'll be getting the energy from sunlight energy and heat energy from sun until the end. Okay, that is till there is universe, there will be sun and sun's energy will be able to use. Okay, so we can say that a natural source providing us energy continuously is called a renewable or non-conventional source of energy. It is from nature. Okay, it is, it won't get exhausted. Till the end of the universe, you will be having this energy. So, this is a non-conventional source of energy or a renewable source of energy. Okay. Now, these renewable sources don't cause any pollution. They are pollution free. Okay. So, you can say uh, they are from nature. Okay. Then, next you can say they are pollution. They don't cause any pollutions. Okay. These are two important points. So, we will be discussing in detail. Now, what are non conventional what are non renewable sources of energy or conventional sources of energy just the opposite the sources of energy which have accumulated over a very long period and cannot be quickly replaced when exhausted so once it gets exhausted it is exhausted okay you cannot renew it you cannot replace it okay so they get depleted they get depleted they cause pollution they cause many environmental pollutions so there are many disadvantages for this so understood in brief, what are the conventional sources and non-conventional sources? Let's discuss them in detail. Renewable sources of energy. A natural source providing as energy continuously is called a renewable or non-conventional source of energy. Now what are the renewable sources? So one important source we have said which is sun. Okay. Till the universe exists, there will be sun's energy. Sun will provide us heat and light. Okay, it is used by other bodies that is for reproducing wind energy, to producing tidal energy, to produce ocean waves. For all the sun's energy is being used in one form or the other. Okay, now sources of renewable energy, one, first one is sun. Second, we have wind. Third, flowing water. Flowing water will be able to produce energy. Then biomass and biofuels. Next is tides, then oceans, geothermal spots, nuclear fuel. These are all sources of renewable energy. So one by one we can discuss in detail. Sun as a source of energy. We know sun is the most significant or the main source of various types of energy. It is not just the solar energy. So energy from obtained from sun directly we call it as a solar energy. Energy obtained from the sun is called solar energy. Okay. Now when you take the case of the sun, do you think at a particular place on the earth, every day you will be getting same amount of sun's energy? So, inside the sun, what is happening? There is nuclear fusion reaction happening inside the sun. Okay. And a tremendous amount of energy is produced inside the sun. This energy gets continuously, it keeps on continuously radiating. Sun keeps on radiating energy. We know that earth is very far from the sun. So, only a small portion, small fraction of this energy will be reaching the earth. 
okay so when energy reaches earth sun's energy that is solar energy which is reaching the earth it is absorbed by land okay so it falls on the land it falls on the water bodies it falls on plants so what does the land and water bodies do they convert the energy okay they will be able to produce wind snowfall rain okay they are able to produce other forms of energy from this okay now the solar energy that is sun's energy which falls on plants the plants will use this energy to prepare their food so once plants prepare food the cycle goes that is the food chain the energy flow goes okay you have to remember one more thing one more very important thing that is solar constant so we have said that the sun's energy it falls on the earth surface okay earth's atmosphere now here what is happening on a particular area it is being fought it is falling okay so here it is not necessary that the sun's energy that reaches today at this particular spot will be same as the energy that will be reaching tomorrow at that same point it is not necessary okay day by day it can change okay from place to place it can change it is not uniform in every direction even though the sun is radiating energy it is not necessary that when it reaches the earth surface at every point equal energy it gets okay every place in uh, on the surface of earth gets a equal sun's energy okay so here we have to remember one thing which is solar constant the average solar energy reaching the upper atmosphere of earth per second on an unit on an area of meter square and its value is 1.34 kilowatt per meter square so understood in one second in an area of 1 meter square how much energy okay it is in the upper atmosphere on the upper atmosphere how much of solar energy is reaching so this is called the solar constant and its value is estimated to be 1.34 kilowatt per meter square understood wind as a source of energy what is wind the large mass of moving air is called wind we all know what is wind okay now how is we obtain how do we obtain energy from wind okay the energy so here you can say when wind moves that is when air is in motion there will be kinetic energy when there is motion there is kinetic energy so this kinetic energy of the wind we call the wind energy okay directly or indirectly this wind energy is produced with the help of solar energy so how does this happen when sun's energy solar energy falls on the earth surface there will be unequal heating okay so different places will get different amount of heat so when there is different amount of heat the density of air there will be different so when there is a density difference okay what happens is there will be movement the air will start moving so we have discussed about all these in detail in the previous chapter when there is difference in density so the denser part for example the denser part will be going to the lower regions okay so from a more denser part to the less denser part what happens there will be a flow of this wind okay so here wind energy will be able to produce so how wind energy is produced one is due to the unequal heating of the earth surface then conventional currents then other thing is the rotation of earth so why do we use this where do we use this wind energy mainly wind energy was being used to remove the husk from the grains then you know windmills so windmills are set up at different places it is not necessary that we cannot say it is the most efficient source why because it is not possible to set a windmill at every place only if there is some 15 km per hour only if the wind flows at 15 km per hour only in these places windmills can be set up okay from this windmills electricity can be generated so to rotating the windmills what can be used the wind energy can be used so there are these types of different uses so for grinding okay for grinding to grains this gr uh, to grind the grains into flour what can be used the wind energy can be used so then for a sailing boat wind energy can be used so for moving vehicles wind energy can be used so these are the different uses of wind energy so understood this wind energy also comes from solar energy it is dependent on the solar energy next is 
flowing water flowing water as a source of energy the kinetic energy possessed by a flowing water is called hydro energy so hydro means it is related to water you can just remember this okay so this hydro energy is also coming from solar energy so let's see how solar energy which reaches the surface of earth okay it is absorbed by the water bodies for example ocean lakes rivers what they do is they absorb the solar energy once they absorb solar energy what happens evaporation takes place when evaporation takes place there is formation of clouds okay clouds are formed okay now these clouds starts moving there there will be air currents okay finally what happens the water will come back to the earth here as rain water comes back there is moving water okay so when due to this motion of water energy is produced and this energy we call the hydro energy okay this hydro energy is being used to rotate the turbines it is used this hydro energy is being used to rotate water mills in all these purpose for the all these purpose then to move uh, logs of wood okay in the olden days logs of wood were moved using the hydro energy so because or just because of the flowing water when water flows some energy is produced because kinetic energy is there okay so this we call hydro energy and these are the, some simple applications of hydro energy biomass as a source of energy that is a waste and dead parts of living beings like plants trees and animals is called biomass the energy from this a chemical energy which is stored in biomass we call the bio energy okay so in this biomass we have said what is biomass this biomass bio energy also comes from the solar energy this also comes from solar energy now where is this biomass used now mainly to produce heat biomass is being used as a fuel it is both domestic for domestic purposes and also in the olden days for commercial purpose also biomass has been used as a fuel okay and it this bio energy it comes from the solar energy then you have biogas okay this biogas is used to produce electricity it is it is used to run engines so what is biogas when this biomass is decomposed in the absence of oxygen we get biogas this biogas mainly contains 65 percentage of methane okay so remaining there will be carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide hydrogen sulfide then you have hydrogen so all these are contained in the biogas and where biogas is used biogas you are mainly using biogas okay for the purpose of running engines and to produce electricity okay so called gobar gas gas is mainly depend on the cow dung gobar gas will be produced it is also used for the purpose of producing electricity it is used for producing heat etc okay so understood the biomass as a source of energy tides as a source of energy so in the ocean there is rise of the water okay so the rise of ocean water we call it as a high tides and the fall of ocean water we call the low tides so we can see that the ocean water is continuously rising and falling so this happens in a day twice in a day so due to this high tides and low tides the energy will be produced and this energy is called the tidal energy the energy possessed by the rising and falling tides is known as a tidal energy now because of this tidal energy this tidal energy it can be that is across this area in the coast you can construct dams and harness the energy okay so for by constructing dams you can use this tidal energy to produce electricity now here we don't consider this as a major source one reason for this is there are not many spots where this tidal dams can be constructed okay so then the second reason is during a day in some you can see that there will be rise and fall of tides okay this rising and falling tides which is not enough the energy produced by them is not enough to produce electricity in a large scale okay so these are the two reasons why you cannot consider tide, tidal energy as a major source of producing electricity and constructing tidal dams is also difficult because there are only very few spots where the tidal dams can be constructed
Next, ocean as a source of energy. So, the water in the ocean is also helping in producing energy. Okay, it is indirectly or directly it is dependent on the solar energy. So, there are two things. One is ocean thermal energy and the second is oceanic waves energy. First, we will discuss ocean thermal energy. So, due to solar energy, when the sun's energy falls on the ocean, what happens? The water in the ocean, surface of ocean, what happens is the water will start getting heated up. Okay, so the temperature is high. When you go to the lower layers, the temperature will be low. Okay, so when you compare, you can see there are difference in temperature. There will be approximately 20 degrees Celsius difference in temperature. So due to this difference in temperature, energy is produced. Okay, the energy available due to the difference in temperature of water at the surface and the deeper levels of ocean is called ocean thermal energy. Okay, so this ocean thermal energy can be used to produce electricity. So there is a device that is used to produce electricity using the ocean thermal energy and this device is called ocean thermal energy conversion power plant okay so this ocean thermal energy ote is ocean thermal energy ocean thermal energy conversion power plant is a device that is being used to convert ocean thermal energy into electrical energy and make it use for the other purposes so, understood about ocean thermal energy and the ocean thermal energy is indirectly dependent on the solar energy. Only when the sun's energy falls on the surface of earth, oh, surface of ocean, heating up happens. Okay, the water at the surface starts getting heated up. Due to this, there is a difference in temperature. Due to the difference in temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, what is happening? Energy difference and energy is available. This energy available is called the ocean thermal energy. Next is oceanic waves energy. Due to wind blowing at a high speed on the surface of ocean, the waves will start moving. They will possess some energy and they will be starting to move at a high speed. So they possess kinetic energy. The kinetic energy which is possessed by the oceanic waves is called, fast moving oceanic waves is called oceanic waves energy. Okay, or sea waves energy. So this sea waves energy can be used to produce electricity, but it is not being used yet because it cannot produce energy on a large scale. For small scale purposes, some models have been uh, constructed to generate electricity. Okay, so this is about the ocean as a source of energy. So two things, one is ocean thermal energy and this is oceanic waves energy. So here it is dependent on wind and here it is dependent on the solar energy. So here, what is it? Because we know that wind is also dependent on the solar energy. So, because of difference in the densities only, densities in air only, the wind is starting to move. Okay. So, wind is helping to produce the waves, oceanic waves. Yes. So, this is also indirectly dependent on the solar energy. Nuclear fuel as a source of energy. Nuclear fission and fusion reaction. Nuclear fission is the process in which a heavy nucleus splits into two lighter nuclei of nearly the same size when bombarded with slow neutrons. Just look at this reaction. You are having uranium 92 is its atomic number and 235 is its mass number. When it is bombarded with a fast moving neutron. Okay, this is a neutron. We know neutron carries no charge and its mass number is 1. When it is bombarded, what happens is it will be producing an unstable nucleus. Okay, initially unstable nucleus will be produced. Again, it will split into two other nucleus. One is krypton. Krypton 3692 and barium 56141. Approximately of the same size. Okay. And three other neutrons will also be produced in the fission reaction. So here, a tremendous amount of energy is also released. About 300, about 200 MeV, mega electron volts of energy will be released during this reaction. Okay. And three neutrons will be produced. So this is a nuclear fission reaction. So in fission, what is happening? There is a splitting of the heavy nucleus. Heavy nucleus splits into two almost equal size lighter nucleus. And three neutrons are produced. Now, if you are taking something, if it contains many uranium nucleus, okay, there are many uranium in this. Then here you can see three nucleus are produced, okay. So, this three neutrons, what happens is they go bombard with three other uranium, uranium atoms. Then what happens? Again, the reaction will continue, okay. So, three plus three plus three. So, in the second stage, nine neutrons will be producing. Now, these nine neutrons will again go bombard with other uranium until the uranium 
atoms get exhausted this will continue so this is a chain reaction so in this reaction you can see only in the first step itself you can see three neutrons are produced and 200 mev of energy is produced if this continues in every step the energy that is being produced is very high okay so this is a principle that is used in atom bomb because of this high energy it can lead to explosion okay so this is in case of atom bomb it is used for a destructive purpose for constructive purpose also it can be used it can be used for producing electricity and all so in that case what you have to do is you have to absorb the few neutrons okay for that purpose moderators in case of a nuclear reactor a nuclear reactor can be constructed in which moderators will be there which will absorb the there will be moderators so here what can be done in the nuclear reactor some neutrons will be absorbed okay and the chain reaction won't continue the energy that is produced can be used for a useful purpose it can be used to produce electricity so understood how nuclear fuel is used as a source of energy first we have discussed nuclear fission reaction now what is nuclear fusion so we have said inside the sun nuclear fusion is happening and energy is being radiated tremendous amount of energy is being radiated so fission means it is splitting then what is fusion fusion means it will be combination so for example when two lighter nuclei combine to form a heavy nuclei and energy is produced it we call it as a neutron and energy will be produced we call it as a nuclear fusion reaction nuclear fusion is a process in which two light nuclei combine to form a heavy nucleus in this process huge amount of energy is released so here for example you have a deuterium and a tritium atoms okay tritium nucleus which are combining deuterium and tritium they are isotopes of hydrogen hydrogen protein deuterium tritium okay so in case of deuterium normal hydrogen is h11 the atomic number and mass number is 1 here there is one proton and one there is only one proton zero neutron so when it comes to the case of deuterium there is one proton and one neutron which means the mass number will be 2 next in case of tritium there is one proton and two neutrons therefore 1 plus 2 3 is the mass number so this is tritium when they combine together they will be forming a nucleus okay a helium nucleus hc24 so here you can see 1 plus 1 2 deuterium tritium okay then mass number is 4 here you have 2 plus 3 5 then you will be having a neutron as well so 4 plus 1 you are getting 5 okay so you can see that the mass will be conserved so here what is happening is so mass number will be conserved energy will also be produced okay now according to einstein's relativity e is equal to mc square here when you take the total mass of reactant side and the total mass of product side the total mass in the product side will be less than the total mass in the reactant side so here what is happening some mass is getting converted into energy according to e is equal to mc square m is mass and c is the velocity of light okay what is its value 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so this conversion will be taking place now in your uh, study about nuclear fusion we have said using nuclear fission reaction you can produce electricity that is using moderators or cadmium roots you can just stop the fast moving neutrons and the reactions can be stopped and the energy can be used to produce electricity the chain reaction can be controlled yes using a nuclear reactor but here in case of a nuclear fission we have never used this nuclear fission uh, nuclear fusion reaction to produce electricity okay it can be used but till now it has not been used so even in nuclear fusion reaction a very good amount of energy is produced okay that's all for today in today's class we have discussed about ecosystem food chain we have discussed about the energy flows and the laws of thermodynamics we have then discussed a renewable and non renewable sources of energy what are they and also in detail we have discussed about the different renewable sources of energy hope you all enjoy the session i'll be back in the next session until then stay tuned to learn how learn how free hai par best hai thank you